Hello and welcome to today's webinar on smart enterprise automation with a focus on easing document automation with AI enabled intelligent document processing. Thank you for taking time out and being here today. I am Rakesh from Datamatics and I'll be your host for today. Today we have as our guest speaker Anil Vijayan. Anil is a leading IDP analyst and vice president with the Everest Group. Joining him, we have Saurabh Sharma. Saurabh is the AVP of Product Marketing with Datamatics. So Anil will be giving us an overview on IDP, the adoption, key success factors, and the outlook, followed by Saurabh, who will talk about the Datamatics Intelligent Automation Platform, TrueCap Plus, highlighting some of the key features, some housekeeping announcements. All the attendees will be in listen-only mode. We will be running a live Q&A at the end of the webinar. You can type your questions in the Q&A box and we will answer them at the end of the presentation. And if you happen to miss anything, don't worry, we'll send you around the on-demand recording of this session when it's available. So over to you, Anil. Thank you, Rakesh. Uh, hello, everyone. As Rakesh mentioned, my name is Anil Vijayan. I'm a global vice president at Everest Group, where I lead our research and advisory on next generation technologies such as robotic process automation, artificial intelligence based solutions, process mining, and so on. Thank you for joining in today. Uh, it's a pleasure to be speaking with all of you. Next slide, please. So, the core agenda for today will revolve around intelligent document processing or idp so idp is a term that we coined a few years ago to describe a category of uh, artificial intelligence based solutions that can help automate data ext extraction and entry from a variety of uh, document formats as we go through the content i will of course walk you through the need for intelligent automation the role that IDP plays in that ecosystem. I will then talk about what adoption of IDP looks like today, how it is particularly applicable across different processes, and then finally end with certain success factors you can keep in mind as you consider the adoption or scaling up of IDP solution. Next slide, please. Yeah, so as we all know, uh, automation and digitization have been on the agenda for business leaders for some time now. And 2020, of course, uh, played its role in accentuating that need. As we, are, as we were approaching 2021, uh, we at Everest Group conducted a survey across executives asking them what their key issues and their core priorities were for the next year. And as you can see from the results, uh, automation was a top three agenda item. Uh, not only that, if you look at the top two there, you can easily see how IDP plays a key role there too. So data availability, of course, is, uh, is a big issue and IDP certainly helps unlock some of the unstructured and semi-structured data to make it more available. Uh, as far as cost is concerned, you know, IDP plays a role there too by helping automate things like uh, data entry and thereby saving human effort cost. So as you can see, uh, very clearly, IDP is a solution that fundamentally fits well with the key leadership objectives today. Next slide, please. All right, uh, so now since uh, automation is a key priority for enterprises, uh, it helps to take a quick look at the evolution of automation and its key components. Of course, the, the current generation of automation solutions started with uh, robotic desktop automation or RBA. And this is essentially attended automation that is triggered by a user. Then we move to robotic process automation or RPA, uh, which is unattended automation, which can be triggered by events or as per a schedule. Now, uh, both of these are rules based automation tools. That is, they can automate tasks which are transactional and follow certain roles. But when it comes to judgment-oriented tasks, RPA and RBA tend to fail. So as part of, 
part of overcoming this barrier, um, we started seeing more artificial intelligence based automation solutions such as IDP, intelligent virtual agents or chatbots and other bespoke uh, AI solutions also started coming to the fore. Now, uh, organizations then started combining these technologies and using them together, right? So you would have RPA plus IDP or RPA plus IVA and, and so on. And they did this to extract maximum benefit and uh, try to do more end-to-end -end automation. And this formed the intelligent automation construct. And as I have uh, alluded to earlier, COVID-19 has only accelerated the adoption of intelligent automation uh, since it became obvious during the pandemic that organizations which were actually ahead on their intelligent automation journey, they were much more resilient and they were able to serve their customers better from a lower cost space, right? Even during tough times. Next slide, please. So if you look at the broader intelligent automation ecosystem, uh, we see various different kinds of tools. We have you know, the rules-based automation tools like RPA and RPA. We have AI-based tools such as IBA and IDP. And then we have the ancillary tools uh, such as orchestrators and analytics. Of course, for, for this session, I will be speaking through one of the more highly adopted AI-based tools, uh, which is IDP. Next slide, please. All right, so uh, now let's get into the nuts and bolts of IDP. So what, what exactly is IDP? So IDP is a solution that enables extraction and processing of specific data elements from documents uh, using AI or machine learning techniques. So today, these documents are typically text-based documents such as forms, invoices, emails, you can have even free text, or it could be, an, and it commonly is, uh, scanned images of text documents. So an example of IDP in action would be in the automated identification and extraction of, say, um, account details and signature from the scan of a check. Now, uh, when we look at the components of IDP, there are essentially three steps or three modules. Uh, the first one is digitization. As I mentioned before, the input document can be in electronic format or, or more commonly it is in the form of a scan. So if it is a scan, generally it is converted to text using optical character recognition or OCR. And, and that is what you know the digitization module really achieves. In the check example that I mentioned before, so typically you would have a scan of the check uh, coming in as the input. Uh, it would then be converted from an image to machine readable and searchable text by the OCR. The second step or, or second module, so to speak, is uh, classification. So uh, once the document is digitized and captured, uh, it can be classified based on either the text or the visual elements of the document or very often both. So again, for instance, if I refer back to the example I mentioned, uh, so let's say you have a source which gives you not only checks, but also scanned invoices. Now, in that case, you can train the IDP system to identify each document which comes in as either one of checks or invoices as the case may be, and then suitably route it to different queues or storage silos. The third step uh, or the third module in, in many ways is the most uh, value adding one. And uh, this is where the IDP solution recognizes and extracts specific data elements from, from the documents uh, based on what you have asked it to do, of course. So in, in the check example, again, you could have configured and trained it to identify and extract name, maybe account number, other account details, uh, signature, and so on. And once the extraction is done, uh, what you have essentially done is converted a semi-structured or unstructured document into structured data, which can then be processed far more easily. Now further, the uh, system can potentially validate the structured data as well. Uh, so for example, you can link the IDP system to compare, let's say, the extracted signature from a check with what is already there on record. 
And post validation, of course, the extracted information can be passed down to other systems for things like automated data entry or further processing. These systems are, or downstream systems are typically core systems of record, ERP, CRMs, and the like. So this is essentially how an IDP solution works. It helps automate the process of identifying data elements, extracts those, and passes those on to downstream systems. Now, uh, one key thing to keep in mind here is that uh, since both classification and extraction are based on AI algorithms, you can choose to have a human in the loop to verify the output if needed. So AI-based solutions typically provide confidence scores to tasks that they execute. So if, for instance, an IDP solution is 95% certain that it has extracted an invoice number accurately from an invoice, the confidence score will be 95%. Now at a process level or document or, or field level, you can set a threshold that you're comfortable with and anything which falls below the threshold of accuracy, you can have a human verify the output and potentially correct it. So again, let's say the threshold uh, is 80% uh, and, and the IDP system extracts the invoice number field with only 75% confidence then it'll get routed to a human agent for verification or correction. So, and again, if, if this is corrected, the feedback goes to the AI algorithms and it gets trained on the corrected data and consequently learns and, and gets better. So this is a classic uh, example of what, what an AI-based system does. It, get, it gets better over time uh, as it learns. And, and with, further time progressing and uh, more training being important to the system, you can also get a greater degree of straight through processing or automation. Next slide, please. In many ways, uh, IDP is uh, an intelligent version of what you may have already encountered as optical character recognition or OCR based solutions or, or even template based capture solutions. But the advantages of uh, IDP and automation become more evident when you compare how it pairs against traditional solutions in various contexts. Now, uh, in a traditional template-based capture solution, you typically have an OCR engine, which helps with the conversion of images to text. Uh, so thus far, it, it's very similar to IDP. But then you would have to set up a template for extraction. And this setup template would be rules-based. That is, it would tell the system the position that you expect certain data elements to appear in a document. So if it is a particular form and, and you know that a certain field, say customer name is going to appear on the top left-hand side at a particular XY coordinate, uh, you would feed that into the system. So for each different variant of the document, you would need to create that setup template and tell the solution where you would expect data elements to appear. This works fairly well when it comes to predictable inputs, uh, meaning the scans are of same size and quality, and the types of documents coming in are known or are of constant or consistent templates. But if you start to encounter new templates or different scan types like mobile images and so on, you quickly run into errors and incorrect data elements being captured. So imagine a scenario where your organization is dealing with invoices. Now, um, you may be looking to extract, say, invoice number from a thousand different kinds of invoices, and, and these templates keep varying. The place or, or position where invoice number appears would keep changing. So in, in one case, you can have, let's say, the invoice number appear top left. Uh, in another, it could be bottom right. Uh, yet another one could be a multi-page invoice uh, with the number appearing maybe in somewhere in the middle of the last page. Now, in that case, IDP would uh, certainly work better than traditional solutions uh, since it's uh, both intelligent and template agnostic. So even if a new template comes in that the IDP solution has not trained with before, it may still be able to recognize and extract invoice number. So also, I think move from semi-structured documents to unstructured documents, uh, IDP simply fares better again, uh, since it attempts to recognize, understand, and extract data the way a human would. That is by, by forming associations uh, as opposed to depending on rules like uh, expected position. Next slide, please. 
All right, so uh, naturally when you have a solution which automates data entry and extraction, uh, certain benefits accrue. Increased straight through processing is one, improved accuracy in many cases and consequently better compliance and governance also come into play. Um, automation also means a reduction in cost and higher workforce productivity, of course. Um, the other part is employee experience. Uh, so data entry tends to be a tedious job. So operators for whom data entry and extraction are a part of their job. Automating some of that tedium can also lead to improved uh, employee experience overall. Most of the IDP solutions today come with analytics and tracking. So IDP can also help in tracking different documents, um, you know, time taken to process them and, uh, and so on. And finally, any, any sort of automation decreases reliance on individual human beings uh, or operators and hence improves the overall resilience of the process or, or the business itself. Next slide, please. All right, so uh, now we'll take a look at how the market is behaving and what adoption patterns look like. Next slide, please. Okay, so uh, IDP is a relatively nascent market, uh, but over the last two years or so, it has started to show tremendous growth. Our numbers actually show that uh, the adoption has been increasing by more than 50% year on year. And we expect this to continue going forward as well. Of course, the COVID-19 has impacted some growth in, in 2020, uh, but we expect automation in general and IDP in particular to accelerate further in the post-2020 environment. Next slide, please. Yeah, so in terms of industries, the biggest adopters are banks um, and insurance firms, followed by healthcare and manufacturing. Uh, interestingly, government is also a sector that is adopting IDP rapidly. As you can imagine, all of these sectors deal with a huge amount of uh, documents and, and there's just huge volume in each of these sectors. So therefore, it's natural that they would adopt IDP in larger numbers to begin with. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, from a geography perspective, you would see that the adoption very much aligns with economic activity. Uh, North America, APAC, and, and Europe as a whole uh, are adopting IDP rapidly. Right now, uh, most IDP solutions cater to languages in the Latin script, so English and most European languages fall under that umbrella. Uh, but we are also seeing languages such as Japanese, uh, Mandarin, Arabic, et cetera, being developed within IDP solutions. And uh, naturally, one these, once these are perfected, uh, adoption in these markets will accelerate further as well. Next slide, please. Okay, so if we look at the use cases, uh, we see that both horizontal as well as vertical specific uh, use cases are present. Uh, the two biggest ones are the, the vertical specific banking processes and, and these typically involve documents like uh, KYC, trade finance, et cetera. And then we have the horizontal finance and accounting process. And here we typically see invoice processing. Of course, uh, we expect other use cases to pick up as well, uh, including healthcare where you have documents like patient registration, prescriptions, uh, and so on. And then uh, in insurance, you have claims. And then as, as technology matures, more unstructured documents such as contracts would also open up a particularly interesting and attractive use case. Next slide, please. All right, so I already touched upon um, certain use cases in banking, insurance, healthcare, uh, FNA, and so on. But, but as you can see, IDP really applies to any process where you have documents. For instance, in HR, under recruitment, it can be used for parsing CVs and identifying fit for purpose candidates. Um, you can also use it for processing uh, mortgage applications in banking or bill of lading documents in CPG. Similarly, a great variety of use cases exist in, in pretty much every industry and very often in horizontal processes as well. 
think uh, the the amount of time that organizations uh, spend trying to convert semi structured or unstructured documents into structured data is huge today most of that that effort is really manual um, but you know with idp there's a good deal that can lend itself well to automation next slide please so next we'll look at what you need to keep in mind as you move forward with your prospective idp journeys next slide yeah so as with any disruptive technology uh, it's not all a bed of roses so you need to keep certain things in mind as you go about adopting the technology and particularly when you do so at scale so first let me speak to talent management and change management now uh, when you bring in any technology that automate certain aspects of people's jobs uh, you would need to make sure that the human effort freed up is is utilized in a way that makes sense uh, for the overall enterprise so this may mean upskilling and and reskilling employees who are predominantly tasked with uh, data entry some of these folks may end up as uh, human in the loop uh, using their domain expertise uh, and knowledge to handle more complex situations where the idp solution itself may be uncertain again this does not uh, imply a, a full bloom and doom scenario um, you know in in some ways that kind of uh, fear mongering is unwarranted and and simply not true um, all research is really pointing towards uh, automation not really replacing humans uh, but enhancing their ability to move to more higher order tasks also um, you know with any change in process technology or people uh, you would also need to um, suitably manage change and and this is true of an idp implementation as well the next one is uh, preparedness and performance monitoring uh, again it's all well and good to implement new technologies but one must ensure that these technologies are providing suitable returns uh, hence it's important to measure things like time taken to process documents accuracy rates improvement rates human time for correction and so on with a continuous improvement objective in mind uh, the next is governance and expectation alignment uh, in particular around expectation alignment as you move to new use cases you should know that Now, there are a variety of factors which come into play when you are thinking about how much automation can be achieved at the end of the day these are machine learning or deep learning algorithms and and not magic bullets so for some situations you may get great results for others maybe not so much and and a lot of this can be actually determined uh, beforehand um, at least to a certain extent so so you need to kind of be wise while choosing your a use case and and that also bleeds into the next point around data availability again algorithms need to be trained appropriately for them to function well and for that you need good quality data so when selecting the use cases for implementation one of the factors uh, you should keep in mind is that uh, you know availability of data can be an issue so, so ensure that you have adequate data with the ground truths available for training and finally as you expand you may want to set up a center of excellence that looks at all document automation within the enterprise so typically this resides within your automation center of excellence but of course you need to ensure that you have the right structure the right talent mix and governance mechanisms for greater scale next slide please okay um, so let's take a look at what we expect in the future and and where these solutions are headed first as i mentioned there will be an accelerated adoption simply because the business case is getting more and more clear and as the success story spread there will be uh, increased adoption second uh, we are seeing uh, an increasing number of packaged solutions uh, so what this means is solutions pre trained for certain documents It can be invoices, it can be KYC, it can be mortgages, and so on. And these offer good accuracy even out of the box. 
Essentially, package solutions will enable faster deployment and shorter time to return on investment. The next two are vendor specific developments uh, and, and we'll see changes in the landscape. Likely see more of these technologies come together uh, to help end to end automation. Now, some of these may be achieved through partnerships, uh, others through mergers and acquisitions, and still some others through organic technology investment. And then finally, the, the core technology itself is changing. We will likely see a much more cloud adoption as we go forward. Um, although today, I think uh, a lot of the IDP solutions are deployed on premise. Uh, going forward, cloud adoption is likely to pick up. Uh, many integrations are being built with uh, widely used uh, systems of record. Um, this is also helping with the uh, faster deployments. And uh, as the core technology matures, the ability to extract information from unstructured documents is also improving. So uh, I mentioned earlier, you know, use cases like contract processing or even social media feed analysis. Uh, these are becoming uh, more and more feasible and effective with improvement in the core tech. Uh, finally, the training requirements are also uh, going down. Um, you know, while earlier it used to take uh, several, uh, you know, it could even be up to thousands of documents to train. Uh, now, you know, that necessity of having that volume of documents just for training, uh, that is also coming down. Okay, so uh, that brings me to the end of my time. IDP is an exciting technology area and it promises a great deal when used effectively. So if you haven't uh, started on your IDP journey yet, I would encourage you to consider the technology seriously. And for those who have already dipped their toes, I would uh, also encourage that you look at maximizing the leverage of uh, IDP or quite. Of course, uh, if you have any questions that we can't answer during this session, uh, please do reach out to me. Uh, my contact information is on screen. Thank you and over to you, Saurabh. Thanks, Anil. That was really insightful. Okay. Okay, so uh, Anil mentioned about it, how the two approaches are coming together and from our perspective, can you, can you hear the, can you see the video? Is it working fine? Uh, yes, sir. We can see your presentation. Video is not working, right? Just a minute. Yeah, we're not able to see you though. Hmm. Yeah, it could work now. Give me a minute. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, okay, fine. So, when we start with uh, task automation um, and desktop automation, so attended automation, basically, where human and bots are working together, as we move up, the extent of straight through processing increases. So we do robotic process automation, surface automation, UI automation, or just uh, integration scripts. Some of the analysts call it that. And as we move up, uh, there's a realization that you have these intelligent automation workflows where you're just doing task automation or automating a series of tasks is not enough. You have to ingest data, uh, be it structured or semi-structured data from documents and then convert it to structured format for processing by downstream systems or humans. So as we see in this chart, this intelligent automation continuum is all about bringing together process and data-driven approaches to automation. And the straight through processing extent. So a lot of time IT leaders ask, I don't want to do piecemeal automation. Uh, what's the point of doing say 50 or 60% automation if you look at an end-to-end -end process and that's where the combination of the two approaches works well. The extent of it straight through processing, say 80% straight through processing with accuracy, and the cost of course increase, but we are moving more towards uh, data-driven automation rather than process-driven automation. 
So this is how we bring it all together from a data matrix perspective. Uh, so on the top, you have all sorts of application, be it desktop application, web application, Citrix environments, mainframe apps, enterprise apps, API. TrueBot is our flagship part of your product. So if you look at the center of the architecture here, we have a low code visual designer. We have hundreds of uh, inbuilt component library for developing these automation flows faster. The universal recorder is universal true sense, so you can do object level of identification and things of that sort. And of course, we uh, allow you to run multiple processes on a single bot. So if you uh, want to run, say, four or five processes and ensure that there is a effective utilization of bot that we allow you to do that. Cockpit, as the name suggests, is the centralized monitoring and control um, uh, piece of the architecture. Digital workforce is nothing but software bots, your unintended and unintended bots. Uh, of course, you want insights into how my bots are performing, how the platform is working, how the processes are working, if some trained process is failing, say, after X number of steps, you want to go back to the whiteboard, redo the process, and then automate. So that's all taken care of. But through bot, uh, through cap, that's the main focus for today's uh, uh, webinar. So on the left-hand side, you have lots of documents coming in, unstructured, semi-structured information in those documents. We do pre-processing, so auto-cropping, so just making sure the shape and size of the uh, document is in uh, is intact, it's good, and then you can have greater degree of uh, extraction from the document. So you can call it cognitive capture or intelligent extraction. Of course, uh, there will be exception management. Sometimes you want to do quality checks so that human in the loop capability is there, and then you can export it. So it could be a JSON format, CSV format on an API. On the right bottom, if you see, there is a piece of the architecture uh, referring to AI ML models. So that's the AI ML IP that uh, our team in Data Labs is building. So basically, uh, machine learning, natural language processing, deep learning, computer vision. So we have 35, 40, 40 uh, artificial intelligence machine in learning engineers, and a lot of them are PhDs, so we can leverage that IP as well. So that's how it comes together. Uh, again, focus is on uh, intelligent automation, end-to-end -end automation, and achieving a greater degree of straight through processing, not just from uh, IDP, but from an end-to-end -end process. Uh, for TrueBot, can be deployed on-premise, cloud, and hybrid environment, as the uh, preference may be. With TrueCab, we prefer to be predominantly cloud because it makes sense. You don't need to worry about underlying infrastructure. It can scale depending upon your document uh, workloads. But there is, of course, the option of on-premise deployment as well for those customers who have data security and regulatory compliance uh, requirements. Now, let's delve into the TrueCap IDP solution architecture. So if you look at the left hand side, you can have emails, file transfer protocols, APIs, database, all sorts of document sources. And these sources, from there, we ingest unstructured and semi structured data in documents. The core piece is the basically the IDP core architecture here. So documents come in. There are a few things worth highlighting if you look at the centerpiece of that. So we support multiple OCR. So there's a built in OCR in the product that you can use readily. In case you have a preference for a certain OCR engine or you already have a license, we support that. So we support four other leading uh, OCR engines, so Abby, Google, AWS, and, and so on and so forth. Um, other few important pieces is that uh, if you look at, you can have different version of the machine learning model. So if you want to maintain a certain version for processing certain kind of documents, another version for another set, you can do that very well. Uh, human in the loop is a key capability because uh, whether you like it or not, there is going to be some exceptions. We, it's difficult to achieve 100% straight to processing with accuracy all the time. And might as well, if you are the manager of the knowledge workers who are working on these tools, you might want to do a quality check. So for that, we support human in the loop capability. It gels well with the core uh, document processing architecture. True Cap Studio and Administrator are the other key pieces of the architecture, but again, the focus is to make sure that you can uh, achieve a greater degree of straight through processing with accuracy. There are a few things like knowledge management, so those are the business rules to make sure that 
uh, I will give you an example. If you have just a, take take the example of PAN card, for example, in India, the fifth letter is the first letter of your uh, surname. So those kind of rules, which are very specific to the process, very specific to the document type, you can configure that. And as as the system learns, uh, because it's all machine learning based, accuracy improves with time. Exception handling, log and audit trail for your regulatory compliance that's taken care of. You can do licensing management, security piece is taken care of. So data at rest and data at motion both are uh, supported by us. So that's uh, in brief about the IDP solution architecture. Now well, let's look at the processing um, piece of it. How do we process? So you have the input process where you have ingest data from uh, documents. It could be unstructured or semi-structured. Uh, in the red, you have those services which you use uh, um, machine learning capabilities. Uh, those blocks which are Completely red are UI processes. So we have a splitter. So if you have like a, a document where you have three or four invoices together, splitter, make sure that you can split into different files. Uh, right now it's manual, but we are working on making sure that it's automated. And then you identify the pre-processing module and then process it. OCR, again, as I mentioned, it could be the built-in OCR which comes in the product, or you can use any of your OCRs of your choice, but of course you have to license that. And then extraction, the post-processing st steps is extraction and validation. It could be human in the loop and then you export the service, um, the output. It could be JSON, CSV format, or you can just export it by an API. So that's in short. I'll just briefly touch upon the, some of the key differentiators of the product. So one of the things that we see again and again in the market and a lot of times customers ask for it is, you are a large enterprise, you are dealing with hundreds of vendors and there are thousands of invoice types. Just creating those templates and maintaining those templates is itself an exercise. And you are not reaping the real benefits of automation by doing that. So we, we understood that pain and what we have devised is a template-free approach which reduced the setup time by 30 to 70%. So we have benchmarked it against some of our leading competitors so just just if you want to take the total time to automation, just the initial step of step of templatizing and making sure that this can work end to end, and you don't need to invest too much money, and of course resources and just maintaining those templates, that's taken care of. So that does help with uh, reducing the total cost of ownership, and you achieve faster uh, time to automation. So typically, if it's like six to seven weeks in the competing solutions in our case it's significantly lower of course the system is based on machine learning capability so it does continuous learning and improvement and there as i mentioned i gave you the example of a business rule like pan card so that's how we ensure that those business rules are met and only those values or those characters who pass that test are moved for further processing uh, again i would say the entire uh, focus from a cognitive capabilities perspective for TrueCap is to make sure that we achieve a greater degree of straight through processing with higher accuracy and minimize the manual effort. So for knowledge workers, you have knowledge workers working on this tool. The, the end game is to make sure that you achieve 80, 90% or maybe more accurate uh, straight through processing with greater accuracy, 95 plus. Uh, multiple OCR engines, I suppose I already covered that. Uh, so this, this started uh, last year, a lot of customers were asking for cloud-based delivery and, and the imperatives were pretty clear. Uh, you don't want to go back to central IT for procure uh, infrastructure that just a cumbersome process, rather you should be working on meeting your most pressing business requirements. So we understood that. So this is predominantly cloud-based uh, solution, but if in case you need it, you can also deploy it on-premise. A uh, well, few um, benefits of that delivery is, first is, as I said, there is faster time to value. You don't need to worry about procuring the infrastructure, additional servers as the capacity goes up and down. The second thing is, it gives you the uh, economics of the cloud. So as you move uh, and do the calculation for TCO of a five year period, cloud does help save infrastructure costs. So that's one of the things. Not to say that you can't deploy it on-premise for those uh, customers or those enterprises who still have data security, privacy, and regulatory compliant mandate because of the CIOs or the CISOs 
is a bit wary of move, moving anything to the cloud in that case we support on premise as well but in that case uh, you have to take care of the infrastructure so cloud based delivery pre built ocr that does save the tco quite a lot uh, so uh, at datamatics we have around 20 years of experience in business process services we understand the knowledge worker user persona what are the key requirements from their perspective so we have kept that in mind we have we understand their pain and we have designed a very easy to use configurator and a very compelling user experience to make sure that they are able to get trained faster on this tool and start delivering uh, results and achieve automation it's browser based access and intuitive ui so of course it's faster document processing uh, uh, I think Nanil touched uh, upon it earlier in his presentation. Uh, I touched upon as part of intelligent automation continuum as we want to do end-to-end -end automation. Most of the enterprises are asking for it. I don't want piecemeal automation where I do 50% automation or 60% automation. Might as well focus on doing, say, 80% automation, still achieve accuracy. Accuracy is, of course, absolutely important. So in that case, we support a seamless integration with TrueBot for end-to-end -end automation. So automate a series of tasks to TrueBot or any other leading RPA product. If you have one already, we integrate with that. And then ingest unstructured data and convert it to structured format for the further processing. So it could be a downstream system like an ERP CRM or for that matter, just an RPA tool, or it could just be human at the other end of the spectrum. So that, that's taken care of. Uh, as I mentioned, we also support, uh, provide, uh, it's a pretty open platform. So we provide platform APIs so you can easily integrate with any of the leading RPA products as well. Uh, pricing wise, so pricing is a bit tricky in this market. We understood uh, that what competitors are offering and then was this what customers are asking for. So we have benchmarked that pricing. So it's pretty competitive and uh, it's very flexible as well so if you are a sme small and medium sized enterprises you can just start up and running with thousands of documents and if you're a large enterprise say processing 1 million 10 million 50 million of documents then we take care of that as well uh, in so it's basically page volume how much page volume you want to process in the licensing term which is typically one year but in case you run out of pay that quota of page volume there's of course the option to do add-on processing so you can still keep using the license as the case may be so that's about the two cap product what is our product strategy how we bring together true bot and true cap to do end-to-end -end automation uh, uh, so if you go to our website and if you look at the true cap uh, section of it you we have a true cap enterprise free trial and that's uh, access to our cloud-based idp solution so again no need to worry about setting up uh, your underlying infrastructure get up run faster so it's a 33 30 day free trial period and you can process up to 50 pages of documents so invoices or any other documents that you have within that 30 days period you can process 5000 documents for free uh, of course it's a template free approach so the setup time is reduced dramatically 30 70 percent from my perspective is pretty huge in terms of saving just the first step because you're not realizing the benefit of automation anyways in that state so might as well get done with it faster and that helps you achieve faster time to value uh, again as i mentioned because it's cloud-based and it comes with pre-built ocr there's a lot of hazel is taken care of so you don't need to worry about which ocr is a tool to use and just to elaborate on that we have benchmarked our ocr tool against the pre-built OCR tool, against the leading OCR tools like uh, Microsoft, Abby, uh, Google, and others, and it's it's as, com as good as anybody else out there. So just the benefit of having a pre-built OCR and delivery via the cloud, that does help reduce the TCO, and in an environment where we are living, we're going to the central IT for procuring any piece of infrastructure is compulsory. You just don't have that luxury of in terms of time it makes sense to just use it via the cloud so that option is supported so please do visit the website uh, just uh, get your hands uh, uh, hands on with the product in case you have any questions we are there to answer we also provide consulting and any kind of advisory you need uh, so pretty exciting uh, to try that and last just to sum it up 
uh, we have a, our major intelligent automation summit coming up on March 17th in India, Asia, Middle East, and Europe, and March 18th in America. So please join us. There are going to be analysts, uh, industry leaders, practitioners, and we will talk about the practical insights and the tangible benefits of intelligent automation. So when we speak of intelligent automation, it's more about RPA plus IDP plus EIML, bringing it all together. So save that date, March 17th and March 18th. In case you have not received the invite, you will receive that soon. So that's it for my side. I think we can just start with the Q&A now. Yeah, Sanjay, hey, thank you, Saurabh. Thank you, Anil, for an insightful presentation. Uh, we see a few questions coming in, and I'll just read the first one out. So to the attendees, in case you have any questions, please type them in the any box and we will answer them. So the first question is from Paul. He's asking, you mentioned that TrueCap Plus supports multiple OCR tools. Can you specify which OCR tools are readily supported? Yeah, so I think I covered that, but uh, Abby, we support Abby, we support Google, we support Microsoft and we support another one, uh, and we also support our built-in Nokia. So three, four out of four are supported, and those are supported in the sense is ease of integration, and there's a built-in OCR, so you don't need uh, to license for additional OCR if uh, you're fine with that. And we have benchmarked it against the rest of the OCR engines, but just for the flexibility of enterprises, because some enterprises already have license to these leading OCR tools, we support them out of the box. Thanks, Sora. So we have the next question from Amanda. She's asking, we have tried using machine learning models in the past with OCR engines, but the accuracy was an issue. How does IDP overcome this specific challenge? Anil, Maybe do you want to take it up? Yeah. Yeah, sure, I can take it up. Uh, so uh, there are various uh, solutions out there which uh, in multiple ways claim to be using machine learning uh, even in the OCR part of it as well you can use uh, machine learning to just improve the digitization right uh, but if it comes to a pro IDP solution you use uh, machine learning will be employed as part of the extraction process and it would be template free so that's one way of identifying whether it's a pro IDP solution and in general you know idp solutions get better with time uh, as well right so again i i don't know the specifics of the uh, solution that we were using earlier but uh, in general uh, an idp solution would function much better than an ocr based uh, template based solution yeah and from yeah. our perspective the way we see that a lot of gics for example Shared Services Center have been developing their own machine learning tools and using it with the OCR tool. But the accuracy in that case is still 60 to 70 percent, not more than that. IDP, because of the way it handles the pre-processing and post-processing stages, and the actual application of AI just for document extraction, that dramatically increases the accuracy. So I think that's where it's a game changer if you compare it with experimenting with some machine learning models in just OCR. That's that's what we see in our customer base. Thanks, Saurabh. So we have the next question from Shiv Kumar. He's asking, have you implemented IDP for any Indian company? Yeah, there are, there are lots of companies that we have implemented IDP across sectors. Uh, BFSI, I would say, is... Uh, majority of share then healthcare bit of manufacturing and it's picking up so i would say dozens of indian company we have implemented idp and uh, and the combination of true bot and true cap as well so for those who are looking to not do task automation and then in just unstructured and semi-structured data and convert it to structured format we have done the end-to-end -end automation as well Thanks, Saurabh. So the next question is, does the pre-built OCR tool support handwritten documents or, or text detection? And is it multi, does it have multilingual support? 
Yeah, so on the language piece, so we we so it supports Roman script and it does it well. So any kind of Roman script, uh, any language that is written in the Roman script is supported. As far as others, so we are expanding with our Arabic. Uh, we are not offering it as an add-on to the product right now because we think that anything that's lesser than 75%, 80% accuracy is not worth uh, exposing to the customer. So we are experimenting on site. And there are some discussions on the partnership, how we can support, for example, Devanagari or Mandarin. So those discussions are in place. But Roman script we support readily. We can extract information from Arabic, but because of the semantics and uh, there's still some work needs that needs to be done to make sure that you achieve at least 90% accuracy. So we, we are getting there. And uh, maybe Anil can uh, elaborate on what's the, what's the general market scenario like in terms of supporting different kind of scripts in language anil if you can just add to that sure sure so uh, i think i briefly touched upon it uh, but yeah uh, today like uh, like you mentioned sir i think most of the um, latin or roman language based scripts uh, those are the ones which are widely supported Having said that, uh, we are seeing developments, uh, you know, in, in certain other languages as well with different scripts, including Arabic, uh, Mandarin, uh, Japanese, and so on, right? Um, the maturity of some of these uh, is still uh, not as high as, uh, let's say, some of the um, European languages, uh, but we expect that to change uh, fairly dramatically, maybe over the next one year or so. Okay, thanks, Anil. Uh, the next question is on the security. Uh, what is the? Uh, can you just elaborate on the security and how 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 do you secure the documents? So we have the necessary provisions to secure data at rest and data in motion. And if you are going with the cloud-based model, then leading cloud providers have probably best of the breed. Uh, technologies when it comes to security. So gone are the days when people were wary of CIOs and CISOs were wary about. And I, so I was an analyst in my previous life and people used to ask this question. And my answer was in your enterprise, whatever infrastructure provider you are, or even an enterprise, you can't have more than say dozens of security experts. These leading cloud providers have hundreds and hundreds of security experts. So, Cloud is as secure as it can get. So that piece of the underlying infrastructure and interaction is taken care of the cloud service provider. And at our end, we make sure that all the necessary data at rest and data in motion requirements are met. Thanks, Saurabh. So, the next question is from Bruce and he's asking in terms of data extraction, does TrueCap Plus support best of two or three OCR engine outputs for a greater accuracy? Yeah, so that's the what's in the product roadmap. So we are working on that. Uh, so there are a few ways to do it. Do it. One is you just pick the fields and the kind of text uh, text fields or it's a nested table which should be supported by a particular OCR. The other is you put different OCRs on it and then compare the value and then give an output. So we are working on that. That's a very near completion. So that would be part of the next fields. But that's a plan because if you want to beat the competition in terms of accuracy, that's the kind of architecture we are looking at. So that's a great question. Yes, we are working on that. Okay, so the next question is, uh, what is the confidence score on handwritten documents and does the solution support handwritten documents? Okay, so in terms of handwriting, uh, so we have experimented, we have partnered with uh, a specific vendor, but what we see is again, the accuracy is not in the range where it makes sense to do automation. From CIO perspective or automation COE, uh, director or leader perspective, 
the idea is if I can achieve at least 75 80 percent accurate uh, straight to crossing with accuracy then it makes sense but if I'm not going to achieve that kind of strike rate what's the purpose of doing automation so that's work in progress we are working towards it but right right now we are not exposing it to our customers but that's pretty much the next big uh, uh, theme on our product uh, development agenda and and maybe anil can add to it uh, what do you see in terms of this uh, handwriting recognition and all those yeah so handwriting yeah handwriting as you uh, mentioned saurabh i think uh, you know, in general, the accuracy rates are, of course, not as high as uh, you know, printed text. Now, of course, uh, even within handwriting, there are nuances. Uh, so, you know, block letters are still um, can uh, can still be extracted with higher accuracy rates. But obviously, when it comes to cursive, uh, it becomes even more difficult. Uh, one of the other ways that we've seen handwriting. Um, or the problem of handwriting being dealt with is is in specific solutions or in specific niche areas, right? And that is generally aided using a data dictionary. So if you are thinking about a prescription, so the accuracy is actually improved, even though the extraction accuracy might be somewhat poor. The accurate overall accuracy is improved by supplementing it with a data dictionary. So you can always go and check against that data dictionary and get the closest match. But yeah, overall, um, there's still some room for improvement in terms of the technology when it comes to particularly cursive handwriting. Thanks, Anil. The next question is, uh, you mentioned that TrueCap Plus and TrueBot can be integrated for end-to-end -end automation. How easy is this integration and does TrueCap Plus readily readily integrate with other rp tools yeah so that's a great question so uh, that is a uh, deep integration so truebot and truecap you can use readily so it's just not via api so that integration is always there uh, on the truecap side it's a pretty open platform so we have platform apis you can integrate with any system so we are working towards offering dedicated connectors to some of the other leading RPA products. Uh, true with TrueBot, it's it's easy. It's just get up and going. With others, we are uh, you can do it via APIs, but we are also working on custom connectors and dedicated connectors, making sure that it, that process is much faster. So the idea is to make sure that it's interoperable, not just with TrueBot, but other RPA products, and not just at API level, but as a dedicated connector. That will allow you to achieve end-to-end -end automation. Okay, thanks, Saurabh. I think we're done with the questions, uh, and I think we've also come to the end of you know the time for today's webinar. So, uh, with that, I think that's all we have got time for today. Uh, so to the attendees if you would like to speak to us further please write to us through www.datamatics.com or business at the rate datas.com email us on that id uh, so thank you anil thank you saurabh for a great presentation and once again just a quick reminder just please register for our upcoming virtual event datamatics intelligent automation summit 2021 and thank you everyone for participating in today's webinar. We hope to see you all again next time. Thank you. Have a great uh, rest of your day. Bye. Thank you everyone. Bye.